Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a really cool pattern and history for you today. This is another one of those that's not that common. In fact, the only book I found it in was Terry Hellickson's Popular Fly Patterns from 1976. I did see it referenced in John Shuey's 2015 Classic Steelhead Flies, but by and large, this pattern was almost lost to history. So what are we talking about? It's the Orleans Barber. So this fly was almost forgotten until 1982 when, get this, Polly Roseboro, one of our favorite Pacific Northwest fly tires and fishermen, did some research and figured out where it came from. Now Polly published an article in 1984 in Dick Surrett's Fly Tire Magazine, and he gives us the backstory on the barber and where this fly came from. So it turns out the barber's name was John Barisa, born in the late 1800s in Hungary, but came to America and worked in the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco throughout the 1920s. And the story goes, one of his rich clients there bumped into him fishing up in the Klamath River in the upstate California and made him an offer, said, hey, why don't you let me set you up as a barber up here in the small town of Orleans, California? That way, when I come up here to go fishing, you know, I'll have a barber to get my hair cut and shave. So Barisa said, sure, that sounds like a great deal. He sets up shop in uh, Orleans, California, and apparently had a lot of free time because he got to fish up and down the Klamath River and became an expert fly tire. So that's when he came up with this pattern, just a red chenille body, a little bit of soft hackle, grizzly, and then a wood duck tail, and the fly did great for him. It was really popular there throughout the 1940s and 50s. He sold it up and down the river. Now, the last interesting note in Roseboro's 1984 article mentions that in 1962, Barisa was fishing on the Klamath River. He had a boat full of fish from the morning. He lays down to take a nap in his boat, and he dies in his sleep at age 99. So John Barisa, the Orleans barber, was fly tying and fishing up until the very end. Now, I think that's a really interesting story for a pretty cool fly. So if we can do our part by remembering John Barisa, the Orleans barber, and tying this prehistoric fly, I think that's a pretty cool thing. And it's a very easy tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go, in the vise, Orleans Barber. Isn't this just a cool looking fly? Now it's a pretty big size. It can be as big as a two, and probably as small as a six, and I'm tying it in the smallest size. This is a six. It's a two extra long, one extra strong hook. And I'm gonna step up my thread to a six aught for this one. And I'm gonna lay a base all the way back to the start of the bend. Now the tail on this guy, barred wood duck. These feathers right here, and anytime I can make a fly with these things, I love to. They're just really, really cool looking feathers. And I'm gonna tie in two. So I've got two slips back to back, pretty sides out, and I'm gonna catch them in just like I would uh, a winged wet fly up front. So I've got two back to back and it's a pretty long tail. All those bars in the back are gonna be showing. So I will pinch it in right here, pinching the, the feathers and pinching the hook just a little bit and put a pinch wrap right there, bring it down, try two wraps and then take a look, okay. Are we coming off the top? Pretty well right there, I like that. So we can go ahead and bury these in. Just flatten this out. Don't worry about making a, a step, just try to keep it even, because it's got a big chenille body. So any imperfections are certainly gonna be hidden with this big chenille. It's a red, I'm gonna do it a size medium. So what you might wanna do, sometimes your chenille will be a little bit bunchy, Just smooth it out a little bit, a couple of strokes with your fingers right there. And in this case, I'm going to strip off just a little bit, first two or three millimeters right here, so that I don't have any um, big bump when I'm starting it in the back. So I'm gonna just catch this in all the way to where I'm gonna make that first wrap, and then bring your thread up where we're gonna stop the body, which is gonna be about maybe two eye lengths back because we've got a small hackle to put on up front too. So just take nice even wraps right here, touch and turns, one right next to, it, to the other, fairly tight all the way up to your thread. So 
Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna go one more. We'll see if we can get away with one more. When you're happy with your body, you got it laying flat. Take two wraps up here to lock this chenille in. Now go ahead and snip this. This is fun. Sometimes you get a big fuzzy mess right there. Not too bad, but a couple of extra wraps right here to really lock this in and, and lay a, a flat base for tying in this hackle which in this case is grizzly hen. So it's a soft grizzly hackle. Got a feather right here. It's pretty short and pretty wide, but I'm gonna just catch it in like I do any, any soft hackle or even any dry hackle. Put a couple wraps there and then orient it so that my first wraps will be, the feathers will be, or the fibers will be swept back. So a couple of securing wraps right here. Now we can snip off this stem. And I'm going to need my hackle pliers on this because I've only got about maybe two inches of feather to work with. So I'm going to hang my thread where I want the back of my head to be. Take my hackle pliers and probably three wraps. Just use your best judgment here, but I think three with this Pretty thick hackle is going to give me enough of a swept back front. So just pull these back right here. And let's catch this off. I we'll have a little bit of cleanup to do, but it won't be too bad. I'm going to catch it off with two wraps before I snip this excess. I'm gonna have a few poking forward right here that I'm gonna to have to contend with. But that's not a big deal. We'll just get in here and trim them. Okay, now let's see if we can sweep these back and get a decent looking head with these fibers pointing back. Okay, I've got a few pointing out. Can you see that right there? I'm gonna, before I let go with my material hand, I'm gonna go ahead and snip them. It'll just make it a little bit cleaner. I'm sure the fish aren't gonna mind, but I might have to take a picture of this one for a thumbnail, so. I want it to be a little bit cleaner. Okay, how's that looking for our hackle? I think it looks fine, and that is about the right size head. But keep in mind, it's gonna bulk up just a little bit more with this four turn whip finish. Now let's snip off this big thick thread right here and see if we have any cleanup. I got a couple of fibers right there that could stand to be trimmed, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna put a drop of head cement on it and call this Orleans Barber done. So there you go, folks. Pretty cool looking fly. Super easy to tie. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.